Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's been a few months since I have posted a video, but I am now back in 2020 and I'm going to share with you my wrap up and statistics for 2019. In 2019, I read a total of 150 books, 30 were graphic novels, one was a short story, four were poetry collections, and one was a play. For the projects that I track, new authors, reading different books by authors I've read before, my physical TBR shelf, and rereads, the numbers were much the same as last year with a slight increase just because I read more books, but I definitely showed a significant increase in the number of books that I reread. For author representation, I increased the number of women and authors of color I read, slight decrease in the number of queer authors, and definite decrease in the number of Jewish authors. For representation as far as main characters, again, we're seeing similar numbers here, increase in women and characters of color, slight decrease in queer characters, and the only difference is I read a minusculely increased number of books with Jewish main characters in 2019. Genre spread, as usual, was dominated by fantasy and sci-fi. One of my goals coming out of 2018 was to read more nonfiction, and I definitely did that. 16% of the books I read in 2019 were nonfiction, and I was very pleased with that. As far as my ratings, the two highest ratings I gave were 4 stars and 1 star. The average rating was 3.07 stars. I participated in 11 readathons this year. This was up from seven readathons in 2018. I did a lot of overlap in books this year, so especially for readathons like Blackathon and Contemporaryathon, a good amount of the books that I read fit prompts from both readathons. Blackathon was the readathon I read the most for, and then combined the two Home Infinity and Beyond readathons equaled that. And as always, readathons are a huge amount of fun. I DNF 27 books in 2019. If you are interested in my opinions on these books, I do leave reviews for every single book that I read on my Goodreads account, which is linked to down in the description. Most of the DNF books I read were rated one star. The remaining nine books that I gave one star are ones that I did finish in 2019 and just really disliked enough to still give it one star. I chose eight books that were the most disappointing in 2019. These fall into two categories. One is they were disappointing just because of the hype that I had heard about it, made them seem promising as far as my personal enjoyment of them, and they didn't live up to the hype, or because I'd read books by the author before, and this particular book just didn't meet the expectations based on my previous experience with that author. I want to make a special note about Damia by Anne McCaffrey. This is book two in the Tower and the Hive series. I have been rereading this series for the first time since middle school. The first one was okay, had some problems, but I got through it and it was fine. Damia, on the other hand, I... Hated. It was extremely problematic and very difficult to get through. However, I decided to continue reading the series, and to my surprise, book three, Damia's Children, worked out really well. I really enjoyed it. It wasn't perfect by any means, but I was able to get through it. It had a lot of space stuff that was fun, and it redeemed itself, which is why it's one of the eight books I put on my most surprising list. These eight books are on here for a variety of reasons. The Marie Kondo book and House Magic are on here because of the impact they've had on my personal life. I first watched Marie Kondo's Netflix show, then I read her two books, and then I gutted the apartment. <laughs> and it's been great to be able to go into the kitchen cabinets and not have pots fall all over me and to be able to really see the things that spark joy. I am a huge Marie Kondo fan because of this. And starting from there, I went into interior design type books like House Magic, and from there, I've just been having a field day at the library borrowing into design and color palette books that have been a lot of fun for me. Jane was a book that I had no expectations for or low expectations. The tagline is the woman who loved Tarzan. I thought this is just going to be a book that is so Tarzan focused and not Jane focused despite being titled Jane and it wasn't. It was very much focused on Jane as a person, as a character in her own right who grows, and I really enjoyed it. Similarly to that, Graceling by Kristen Kishore had no expectations going in, but the reason it surprised me is that it had a character, a female character, who didn't want kids or to get married and doesn't change her mind by the end of the book. 
that's very rare and so I considered it surprising. It's something I really would have liked to have read as a kid. So I was really pleased to see that in this book. Bright We Burn by Kirsten White is the third and final book in its trilogy. The reason it's on this list is because even though I enjoyed the first two books, I didn't know where they were going. I wasn't sure how it was going to wrap up. I had doubts. However, Kirsten White brought it all together perfectly in Bright We Burn, and I could not put it down. I loved every moment of it. I loved how it wrapped everything up. It was very satisfying, and I'm so sorry to Kirsten White that I had doubts. I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on her books, and I follow her on Twitter, and she's extremely funny. So if that's something that you're interested in, go check her out on Twitter. The God Who Beget a Jackal by Nega Mizlikia is on this list because it's just this random book that I've never seen referenced anywhere. I picked it up at a used bookstore somewhere years ago and it's got a very low number of reviews on Goodreads, but it was really good. It was a really good African folkish epic. It's really hard to describe, but it's very enjoyable. It's done in a really good tone, and I enjoyed it. Lastly, The Tea Chest by Josephine Moon is on here because I don't normally read Chiclet, which this is. I picked it up at a library book sale because it's called The Tea Chest and it has cute little imagery of teacups and everything on it. I picked it up because of the aesthetic, and then I read it, and I actually really Really enjoyed it. The characters were great. Lots of female characters interacting with each other. It wasn't what I expected. I really enjoyed it and I'm going to use this book to make sure that I keep an open mind on contemporary chiclet in the future. And the last set of books are the Five Star Reads, my favorite books of the year. There are 18 on this list. It is a combination of fiction and nonfiction and poetry and kids' books. Just going to prove that my channel could never be a niche channel because my interests range way too widely for that. And that's my 2019 reading wrap up. Let me know down in the comments if any of these books caught your eye, you have any opinions on them, or want further details. And let me know how your 2019 went. I'll be coming out with a video soon on my 2020 goals. Definitely going to do some different things, trying to streamline the process so that I can get more videos out faster and not wait several months with no hope of ever catching up on my reading wrap-ups. And I'm also doing something different with getting into my physically owned TBR books and really trying to finish them. I've made a very pretty spreadsheet that I'm going to share with everyone so that I can track my progress over the year and you can follow me doing that. I'm very excited to share it with you, so keep an eye out for that video. Thanks for joining me.